Hi guys and welcome to the first build video in my Great Guitar Build Off 2022 build series. So I've been really excited to start this build since about this time last year. So let's just dive straight into it and I'll talk through what I'm doing as we go through the neck build. Those of you that watched the intro video might know already that I'm using a multi-laminate neck. So this is maple mahogany and rosewood neck with a zebra wood fretboard. And I chose the neck and the fretboard just because the colour tones that come through on the zebra wood match really nicely with the contrasting wood on the neck blank. So because this is an SG style guitar, what I'm going to do for this build is to go with a three left and three right headstock type arrangement. But for the neck profile and shape, what I'm going to do is to use the Telecaster template that I've got because it's really my favourite neck shape. So it's going to feel like that really comfortable C shape, fender strat or tele neck that I'm used to, but it will still look right with an SG style body. That also means that I'm going to build this as a 25 and a half inch scale length guitar. So it's definitely more of an SG style than a faithful recreation. But a fender scale length is what I really like, what I'm really comfortable with. So that's why I've decided to do it this way. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing here is just to mark out and cut the truss rod cavity. So I've already got the neck blank and the fretboard plain, flattened and thicknessed, and I have the neck blank all marked up so that I know where everything's going to sit. And at this point I'll also add a small channel route for access for the Allen key into the truss rod. And with that done I can just tidy up the ends of the channel and square them off with a chisel and make sure that the truss rod fits nice and securely. And once I'm happy that that's all correct, I can move on to cutting out the outline of the neck and the headstock. Now I do get a lot of comments about this. A lot of people um, will perhaps say that you need to have a bandsaw in order to be able to make really accurate cuts for both the body and the neck, but I can make extremely accurate cuts with a jigsaw and the right blades. In fact, I still prefer doing it this way, even though I have a bandsaw. And the same is also true of using table routers. I still do freehand routing, I get a much better sense of what's going on with the wood and I think I'm a lot less susceptible to getting tear out if I'm doing freehand routing and freehand cutting. The only thing that can become an issue is deflection of the blade when you're using a jigsaw. But in truth it's all about technique rather than a problem with using a jigsaw itself. So if you're thinking about whether you can use a jigsaw if you've got the right blades, you certainly can. So then once I'm happy I've got the neck shape cut, trimmed and routed up to the nut, I can go ahead and use the spindle sander just to do the final shaping of the headstock and then I can move on to thicknessing the headstock which I find the easiest to do with the router sled. At this point I'm not going to do anything about the curve that I need between the headstock and the fretboard. I'll do all of that once the fretboard is on and that way it'll be a much cleaner job. And with that done it's time to move on to the fretboard. So I think I do this the same as quite a few other builders and that's to say that I'll cut all of the slots in the fretboard before I do any shaping or radiusing of the fretboard and the reason for that is that it's much easier to line up and cut everything while it's square rather than tapered particularly for things like making the cuts where the nut slot is going to be because I'm using a flat bottomed nut and if I want to get them exactly to the right depth I need to do that while it's flat rather than have a much more difficult job of trying to cut that when the fretboard's radiused. So that's the part you can see me marking out and cutting here. And the last thing I'll do is just to mark out where the end of the fretboard is going to be, even though I'm not going to actually cut the end of the fretboard off at the moment because I want to leave a bit of excess on there so that when I come to shape and cut the, uh, the sides of the fretboard, if I get any chip out, it's going to be chip out on the part I'm going to cut off anyway. I suppose if I have one tip at this point, when it comes to nut slotting for a fender style nut, what I tend to do is to do two cuts to depth either side of the nut, and then I'll do another cut to the same depth in the middle of those two, which makes it easy to chisel out all of the excess to get a really nice clean nut slot. And with that done, I can move on to marking out the outline of the fretboard. When I'm working with dark wood or wood with a particularly distinctive grain pattern, it's a lot easier to work to a tape line than it is to work to a pencil line. 
So for all my really important cuts and for things like marking the center of a fretboard like this one, I'll use tape instead of using pencil. This is just a rough cut of the fretboard at this point in time because I'll use the router to flush it up once it's glued onto the body. But once this bit's done, I can just take off the end of the fretboard, drill the access hole for the fuss rod and move on to prep for the glue up. Okay, so that's at least five minutes of me talking through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, which is probably more than enough. I think the rest of the video is, is fairly self-explanatory, so I'll leave the talking there, but I'll, I'll add some annotations onto the screen just to explain the remainder of the steps. And I just want to say thank you very much to everybody that's watching the build that's following. I do appreciate all of the kind comments and the likes that people leave, and hopefully I'll have my next episode soon. Thank you.